What's up, geeks and critters? Welcome back to part two of episode two of A Calamity. And if you're new or you're not new, welcome. And I'm so glad you're here. Not much chit chat here. We're going to get right into it. 11320 is where we left off. Xerxes is about to show up and talk to Nidus and Laren. Woo! We got a story going on right now because Laren is looking pretty stinking powerful and also a little fishy in my opinion maybe not maybe i'm oblivious but she's looking a little sketch quick thank you to movie pal the sponsor of the channel check out their Quick thank you to MoviePallet, the sponsor of the channel. Check out MoviePallet.com. Man, they got an awesome Christmas special going on where you can get an additional 15% off your purchase price. MWGeeks15 is the code. And man, they got some awesome deals going on. So check them out, MoviePallet.com. Excellent quality, excellent customer service, and just an amazing product. Just amazing. I love it. My wife even loves it. So here we are, 1, 13, 20, and here we go in three, two, one. I want to go to Xerxes really briefly, uh -huh. um, who flies to, ex and then, we'll, uh, then we will bring the party back together. But Xerxes flies with his um, griffin. You arrive at Excelsior Plaza, where you see the Herald's Tome. It is a revel here. Um, you see that people are partying and laughing, huge major images. Uh, you see that there's a bunch of professional bards casting huge illusions and music playing in the square. People are drinking and making merry. Um, life it's a wonderful is sight. Good here. Life is good. Uh, uh, and you see, <laughs> for now, um, uh, you see that there is the, the the headquarters of the Golden Scythe, the vault, and everything else. Dude's got a sweet leather so jacket. I'm arriving to where? Look at that. To where you think Nidus would be. Uh -huh. uh, I'll say you just walk in oh, and flip see my camera. Alessander Kyrus there, who you recognize as one of Nidus's right. uh, most trusted. And you see, he goes, Oh, sir, it's a pleasure to see you. Yes, yes, it's pleasure, pleasure. Where's Nidus? I need to speak to him right away. <laughs> oh, he, um. Oh, he, well, he. <laughs> funny story. I'll just he, sit right uh, here. <laughs> Uh, give me an insight check. Uh -huh. yeah. Which of Alexander's persuasion is it? Is it plus 16? Uh, <laughs> 20? What if this little light is lit up, though? Yeah, exactly. It's a little candle. Yeah, it's a little head candle. <laughs> oh, yeah, the little guy with the head. <laughs> um, you watch a, a man whose whole job is keeping account ledgers um, feel suddenly very go. frightened. Not of you doing anything, but you, you know the look people give when they feel like they're about to be in trouble. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and he goes, <laughs> he goes like, well, it's very funny, you know, the, um, the guild. Uh, I completely in, like, mm -hmm. in, encroach in his space, yeah. and I put my hand on his shoulder, and I give a gentle tap, actually. Yeah. And, uh, and I say, my friend, there's no time for this. It's urgent business. The first knight of Avalier is asking you, where's Nidus? Woo! Yes! Yes. Give me, give, and I'll leave it totally up to you. Give me, <laughs> give me persuasion or intimidation. And the intimidation would not go wrong. It's not like you're intimidating him, like I'm gonna hurt you, but right. it is, there is like, you are, there is a pressure from above coming down. Sure. So mm. either one of those. Um, I'm, I'm not, I'm not the kind of person to try to scare okay. somebody. I think it's a persuasion. Okay, go for it. 29. Damn. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, wow. he is the first knight of Avalir, so you. he is pretty intimidating, I would assume. First knight. The Guildmaster Akira is with the Architect Arcane within the Meridian Labyrinth. How long ago did he leave here? Um, you see, uh, he... in this city. Can nobody keep a damn secret? <laughs> um, on a 29 persuasion, nobody can. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, you see, you see, he says, um, the Guildmaster <laughs> is within the Meridian Labyrinth. He, he has taken a a porter there, but but the young lady, I believe, has already um, recused herself to other Thank guild you. business. And I leave. Uh, you see, he says, first night, I, I should warn you of something. Ooh. I'm already gone. I'm already jumping back <laughs> on. Oh, he's just, he's just gone. Yeah. I, 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 <laughs> 
I jump back onto Tempest and I go like, I soar up above the city. Yeah. Mm. To get like a bird's eye view and to try to process some of the stuff that is kind of happening, the stuff with uh, Pervin and trying to find Nidus and I look down at the festivities and all that chaos that I had just seen on the ground, just to take a moment away from it, and I take a breath. And then I head over there, and as I mutter to myself, I hate this place. <laughs> <laughs> I go to where he told me where Nidus was. How dare you? <laughs> um, you fly to the Meridian Labyrinth. Um, this character is so serious. The Meridian Labyrinth is I'm going to ask you for a uh, an investigation check, if you'd be so kind. It's called a labyrinth, not a hallway. Mm. <laughs> I think at this point, too, I know that I'm, I'm heading into territory that's above. Okay. Yeah. Mm. A five. Um, uh, so here's so here's the issue, right? Five is not great. Uh, so legit, legitimately, <laughs> five, is five is not great. Not great. <laughs> legitimately, here's the thing: you are able to walk through the Meridian Labyrinth. Yeah. Like the, you do not get lost on a five. This would probably repel and entrap you, but you wear the emblem of your station. And the truth is, as much as Laren likes to keep secrets, I imagine she also doesn't want the city's biggest warrior to not be able to come protect her very delicate machinery mm. in case shit pops off. Mm. So, That's a lot of shit and has given you very detailed maps. Um, <laughs> come down here, it's <laughs> trouble, awesome. please come out. Um, so you, uh, you are joined at the gate that will lead back to Pacha's. You, uh, find them in a antechamber. I don't think you're near the heart right now. I think you are probably a good pace out from the heart. Um, but Nidus and Laren, question, which of the automata do you bring, if any? Uh, or do you leave them to, to safeguard or continue working in the, in the heart? I want to leave everything up here. If Dwyomer is capable yes. of, then of course. I trust her. You turn to leave and see the silvery Aormaton nod farewell and look up as these four massive steely constructs without any facial movement gaze down at her. Mm -hmm. um, she says, all will be well. My lady, may I offer you my most sincere congratulations in the realization of something that has never been. We'll be back soon. Um, you walk out and you hear the <laughs> footsteps, the like the thudding footsteps of uh, Xerxes in full plate, and you guys arrive at the gate that will lead back to port, uh, back to Patience. Hey. Oh. Well, Hi. Brother. <laughs> Good. You came uh, to find us. Yes, what, I've been looking you for you. I couldn't find you. Yes. Ah, uh, we need to come together. What's do I get a sense huh? of any of this? Yeah, I was oh, like, oh, oh, like, like be deceptions and an insight right here. Yeah, a million percent. Oh, it's a natural one. That's fine. Oh. Oh. I'm not even there and I can feel the shit. She just screams. Yeah. Oh. An eight. Right, insight check? Insight. I'm still clutching Evandrin's locket. <gasps> Uh, deception? Deception. 30. Oh, oh my god! Oh. Okay, so Let's on an eight, so, so on, an, on an eight, <laughs> yes. you see, um, uh, you see poorly concealed, concealed tear lines on Laren's face, like she didn't, she didn't get them all, uh -huh. and she is clutching a locket that you know was given to her by Evandrin, your husband. Um, you wow! Know that, you know that she and your wow. husband were dear, dear friends prior to uh, his his return to Avalier and becoming first knight prior to you. Um, however, I will say this: as you notice, like, oh, Laren is in strong a, in ties. A state of deep emotion and probably yeah. multiple of them. Before you can get a bead on any of them and do your like intense first night grilling, yeah. a fucking juggernaut of a 30 deception yeah. check <laughs> comes wheeling in. And I'm gonna say, n n the force of Nidus's personality completely directs the rest of this scene. <laughs> as, as <laughs> moves in. What, uh, what does Nidus do uh, uh, as you hear that from Xerxes? Xerxes, I'm sure there are many things that we need to come together and speak about. Laren and I um, needed to 
uh, come down to collect uh, a few items mm -hmm. before uh, heading back up to meet everyone. I deeply apologize to the group. No, no, uh, no, no, no need, no need, no need. I understand, I understand. There's a lot. We all have many responsibilities. Yes. Wow. And it's time for us to come together, Laren. Yeah. And I, 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 I approach Laren, and I just, um, I kind of catch the little bit that you have uh, missed. Uh, oh. Are you all right? Yeah. Uh, hey, look at me. I'm here for you, no matter what you need. Thank you. <laughs> I need to talk to you. Uh, Let's get everybody together. There's a lot to talk about, and we're running out of time. Laren. Another first night of Avalir in this very chamber once told you, I'm here for you, no matter what you need. Yeah. Uh, you move through the gate, and the party oh. assembles at the Palazzo Porco. Um, uh, uh, Nidus just has this like sunburn sun for the. Because <laughs> 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 the hand, that's right. <laughs> 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 it's like a person in history to shout that at a magical phenomenon and live. <laughs> I did like as we were you were describing. I was like, oh, it doesn't seem like it would be that loud. Oh, like, that's funny because then you realize in all those scenes it probably isn't that oh, loud. Yeah. We oh, hear musical score, but for shit. them it's probably just like, oh shit, it's bright. Yeah, everyone's just yelling because it's like, oh, the visual is loud. That, <laughs> that is shouting awesome. Your own soundtrack. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, incredible. Oh. Um, you arrive back now. So, question to Patia. <laughs> Uh, do you think you go to the IV mm -hmm. table, or are you, uh, are you like, the party's still very much going on. I would say, as a time check for all of you, it's probably about 10 p.m. right now, okay. right? Um, uh, uh, so, so you know, you're still not even over Kath and Moira yet. There's time to do stuff. But, like, traveling and doing stuff and talking and all this, this has taken a little bit of time, right? Um, would you, do you think you go to the Ivy table or are you joining somewhere more private? I, yes, I think at this point it has escalated and I want something even more secret, <laughs> private. Um, so I kind of like, well, a question to you as well, DM. Um, when the 8% of energy was sucked to teleport a little toy boat to another dimension. Mm -hmm. um, I don't like to Did I, did we sense that? Did, uh, was there like a little dip in the lights? Was there, uh, um, you know? Um, yeah. I would say, yeah. 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 give me either an arcana or a perception. Oh, high DC, high DC. More, more than the other. Arcana yeah. or perception. Yeah. 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 Oh, it's a dirty 19. Dirty I, mean, I mean, it's a natural 19 for oh, a shit. 32. Damn. God, builds are wild. Jeez. 32, and then 26 for Arcana. 26. 15. 15. 14. 14. Um, uh, uh, for you. Mine um, <laughs> <laughs> So on a 20, you can see an ultra It's glorious. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, there, is, there is no obvious blip. The lights don't go out or anything like that. Um, uh, however, it's um, magnificent. The eyes of Avalir undergo a rigorous training um, to just feel magical auras and presences. Mm. There, and a couple feathers on the back of your neck stand up, like you just walked into someone's aura, right? Um, and. Uh, on a th the 30, what? Th Two. 32? On a 32, um, this accompanies feelings, um, this is the exact feeling you get when the city arrives at the intersection of two or more ley lines and switches directions, which you know, you know you're coming up on an intersection, but it's, it's like, it's not yet. Um, so it's a, the feel of a big spell engine kicking up hits you and you don't know what that could be. It, uh, another event in a long list of uh, things that are a little fucked tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody salty. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. 
Excuse me. Do you do you have a crush? <laughs> 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 the, the double ivy room, or yes, like yes. Where? As we yeah, as we walk up, I um kind of you know flick my fingers a little bit and, and trace a little arcane symbol, and um you see the lights dim a little bit mm. in the foyer, and uh, you know um, some. Uh, Colored lights start to fill the room and like dancing spectral, almost like fireflies. And a wonderful dancing water show oh. starts Ooh. happening kind of in the middle from the gardens once again, further to just put on a show to get people to look over there. Yes. A little nice. distraction. As we slink away, once everybody, um, I can sense that there's no eyes really trying. Uh, mm. Yes, truly, mm. you have ensorcelled everybody here. Uh, the show is, uh, is so captivating. Um, uh, and um, you all <laughs> adjourn to the Ivy table with everyone totally enamored of the spectacle of the evening. Mm. Um, you have safety, security, and silence and are reunited. Sweet. Layerin, we did it. We did it. The Astral Layrite is up, it's functional, and it works. It works. <laughs> Truly, you saw this with your own eyes. You saw this. What's that thing? This is the yeah. first I've heard of this. Yeah. What's that thing? Yes. What oh, is this? um, oh God, where to begin? Uh, and uh, can we move things along? I, it's it's ten, and the beverage ball starts in about a half an hour, and I, it's something that I'd really like to get to. Um, <laughs> you you don't go to the beverage ball? <laughs> what? Oh, it's in my early uh, days, yes. Yeah, in my early days. Some of the sort of elite um, mages uh, get together right. and they surprise each other. They turn, uh, they they bring chalices that have all been enchanted and they can all turn one liquid into another liquid and they just sort of trade them and surprise each other with what, nice. what drink is it going to be? Is it going to be mayonnaise? I'm or is it gonna, trying is it gonna to tell you mayonnaise? that I've mastered interplanar travel for our entire city and you're going to talk about a fucking juice bar? I can be late. What is this? What is this interplanar travel thing? That's why they divorced. Moment in Avalir's history <laughs> is what it is. The, the bow, the bow. Yeah. That was the last piece. I needed something from another plane, and it's attuned and it's attenuated, and it works. And I just there's a problem with uh, the uh, energy. I need to speak to some. You are the clo your site warden. You work for the Magisterium. I need to talk to them. I need to know what, what, why they changed something. The Arboreal Calyx came recently. It's 120 years old. It's new and it's pulling my energy. Can and you, I don't. Can you just sort of back up and dumb this down for us? You yes, know, when, when when you talk like this, I just I, I lose track so easily. It's it's. Just please, simpler words. Could I try and uh, recite to you what it sounds like you've said, that you have secretly developed a way for Avalir yes. to travel to another plane. Yes. The entire city. As a city. Yes. Why? Because it's stupid to waste your time trying to become a god so you can ascend to another plane. If we can just all go there, then there's no gods. It's the only thing that truly separates us from them. They're not special. Hmm. What's, what's wrong with this plane? Why, why can't we just be here? Nothing, but why are we limited to this plane? That! Well, this plane's great. Uh, everyone's happy and successful and bored. Look at this distraction that they entertain themselves with. I think it's lovely. Did, did you see the, the fondue? Yeah, I did, not saw it all. The <laughs> promise of Avalir was of exploration and knowledge gathering and growth, and I have dedicated my life. I've sacrificed so much. Others have sacrificed so much so that we could do more and learn more and What not do you expect to find if we were to go there? I'm in, I'm in both, I'm in both camps. Did you know about this? What plane? Yes. Any. All. Oh. Speaking from experience, other planes aren't that great. I know you're from the Feywire, but we could. The magic. 
such an immense amount of resources. Knowledge, power, progression. We are simply limited here. The only thing that makes the gods what they are is that they have access to a whole another realm of arcane potential. I get it. I have it on good authority that Aeor is working on a weapon, something deeply destructive. I will not allow them to supersede us in any way. You knew about this as well? Yes. Yes, I did. And you? Of course. Am I the only one who didn't know about this? I didn't know about this. I didn't know. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to keep this from you. It's easier to ask for forgiveness than permission. It's and also <laughs> much more glorious to boast when you've achieved something rather than watching it fail and but disappointing others. Let's be careful not to boast so soon. An achievement like this, once you start to tell people about it, then it's going to make us a target. Absolutely. Yeah. You have seen it's a, distracted yeah. of it. It's a big like deal. I can commend you on escaping my eye. Ooh. Thanks. I, again, I, I'm sorry. I, this is my life's work. And it worked. Worked. You. You mean you know it will work? No. I have sent an object into another plane. I, I came here. There's a problem only with uh, the arboreal calyx takes its tithe, that stupid bit of energy we owe to the druids down. In Kathwera, but it took more, and I don't know. If, I just have this feeling that either it's taking energy for someone or something that we don't know, or I wasn't privy to, which is bullshit, <laughs> uh, or it's some sort of stopgap to prevent someone else from attempting apotheosis. The Medrasarium is quite loyal to their long withstanding handshakes for people who are long gone. Yeah. Shuffled off of this plane. <laughs> wow. What good is loyalty to a dead person? Woo! This can't what be a line. Coincidence. What a line. We need to catch you up. What did I miss something? Too many coincidences. Lots of them, yes. I Again. felt Something, an arcane pulse. It's not my thing. But Vespin Chloris, the archmage who disappeared in Vassalheim, mm. presented himself to me in a private room through a mirror and said that we would not make it to the Wild Mother's embrace. When? I was gone for like 20 fucking minutes. <laughs> gone for the most important times. Okay, listen. Do you want to do this right now? It's like it's wings kind of reach around. Let me go. Let me go. It's All I'm saying is, you're so focused on your own thing, as magnificent and monumental as it might be, but there's something going on in the city right now that actually matters to people, and you're just concerned with your invention, again, whether it works or not. I go over and I pull a goblet off of the shelf behind a little mini bar in this room, and I walk over and I say, here, it makes whatever cocktail you want. Oh. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> Before we kill him. I'm going to need help in connecting the dots. Yes, I'm yes. a bit concerned that this was able to succeed. Congratulations. Right. Thank Congratulations. you. Congratulations. Okay. Um, but the timing of it, mixed with our approach, and Vespin making himself known, does that not strike any of you as... No, that's horrifying. No. I thought he didn't exist anymore. And the, the warning that came with the Matron of Ravens champion. Oh, the guy yes. with the dog? Yeah. Vaughn. It was a wolf. It was a wolf. He was like, ooh, bad things are coming. Oh, mm. your not naivete. Ah. Yeah, so, not, not just bad things, bad god things. things. Yeah. And okay. your 
dreams. We cannot forget that as well. Who else knows of your accomplishment? Who else knows of your mm -hmm. things are about to happen? Project? Yeah, who else have you told I got besides a feeling. me and us? We truly meant no disrespect. Of course. You are the literal mouthpiece of the city. <laughs> I can and keep you can secret. barely keep your dick in your pants. Ooh. I'm not convinced you were gonna keep uh, a world-changing uh, technological achievement. You have no Fucking idea. Secret. You have no idea what secrets I've kept for you. <laughs> sure, sure. Be vague, and I'll just be uh, faker. We have other things to do right now. Do. Sam, I'd like a deception <laughs> check. Here's what I'd like to know. Hold on one second. Luis, yes. give me an insight check. Oh, God. Huh? Mm. Remember, I Ten. have my ring as well. Oh, shit. Everyone's got stuff to know stuff. Oh, boy. Uh, uh, <laughs> Everyone's got stuff to know stuff. Deception check. Uh, this deception check was not necessarily for a lie, but rather just for something else. Oh. You... Um, Not even telling. I will say this too. At the Ivy table, uh, Sarah, you see the hallway that leads off to that like small chamber where that body was left. Um, as you guys begin to put the pieces of this all together, it's very challenging because there's so much going on in the replenishment, even under the best of circumstances. With the addition of these, you know, Sir Ilarez's dream with the completion of the astral lay rite and the finding that, like, this, th this, against all odds, this apogee solstice, this particular convening of the spheres would see the possibility of a shift in the ley lines themselves, make the impossible possible for one person precious moment. There is the matter of this body. infernal body in the other room of Vespin Chloris, yes. the connection with <sighs> the strange dream, the arrival of Pervon, all of this is leading up to something. Mm -hmm. um, and then there are other something big things that haven't yet had a piece of yarn put to them yet. Yeah. The shuddering of the Hall of Prophecy, uh, strange you know, Milas friend showing up and asking for a favor that shouldn't have known about it. Now, uh, uh, the the Ring of Silver taking an active interest in this case. Adler's a big city. There's a lot going on uh, that's a problem, even without all being a conspiracy. But there is much at stake here. Um, as the six of you sit at this table, coming into an awareness both of this revelation and then this very disturbing new information, uh, you have time, as strange as that sounds. The apogee solstice will occur tomorrow. It's it, Whatever you're gonna do needs to happen within the next 24 hours. That's your window of opportunity. And again, if you miss that, it's important to say if you miss that window, it doesn't mean it never happens. It just means that it goes back from being possible to theoretical. Oh, jeez. 24 hours. 24 hours. Oh my gosh. Possible to theoretical. Bryn, yeah. I, I was just gonna say, do I, would I know just from my history with the library behind it's a me lot. any more strange instances on when the ley lines and the planes are this closely aligned? Give me, um, uh, give me a history check with advantage. With advantage. Oh, fuck, I just my knee. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> it's just pure death and rage right now in your head. Uh, yes. Yes. Been the table. Been there. Me too. <laughs> Been there. It's terrible. You remember the first Such time a terrible feeling. explained Apogee Solstices to you. It's a woman that you knew as a child. Hmm. Uh, you don't remember her name anymore because nobody does. Oh my oh god. god. You are wow. fucking kidding me. You <laughs> learned it from her? Right. 
That's right. We learned it from watching you, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> Mom? 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 Um, <laughs> a beautiful woman with raven hair who was one of the greatest wizards you ever met once told you what was possible on a given apogee solstice. Um, the, the last time these solstices, uh, there, was a, there was an apogee solstice, uh, there was some shifting of the ley lines of Exandria. Um, ley lines, again, for those here, I think you would all know this, they, they, they move around the meridian of Exandria. They, they are terrestrial by nature. They're the lifeblood of the magic of the world. To create a, and even hearing the name of the engine, an astral ley rite, something that mm. could take something truly of the world and move it to another dimension. But you, it all comes together when Laren's talking about what's possible because at an apogee solstice, if the ley lines are shifting, anything's possible. Anything's possible. The woman who told it to you mentioned it because there was, a, she said she was working on something that in a few years' time might become possible. Apogee solstices occur about every 120 years. 20 years. Okay. Well, it seems wow. we need to come to a consensus with regard to what is important. Big stuff happening. What needs to be done. Or big stuff and about to happen. Of course, we can uh, move to in uh, when when we feel comfortable and have time to do so. Um, the Vespin Chlora situation seems, is of course upsetting, but uh, I'm not in incredibly sure or clear on what we can do about it. Sure, I, I can see that position. My concern, again, only looking on the outside from the knowledge that you've gleaned, is that the timing of it, this person trying to replicate what the Matron of Ravens was trying to do, and you creating a device that is taking advantage of this lay right. I would declare I made the lay right. The I'm, lay taking right. A, I'm taking advantage of the, the solstice. solstice. Yes. Thank you. Gotcha. I mean, that. I listen. <laughs> that. Uh, I'll also have a small nitpick here for Loquacious and Xerxes. Uh -huh. As uh, as Sarah has just said, re Vespin recreated the Matron's ritual. You know that's not true. He didn't. No. Oh, yes. yes. It's mm -hmm. a slightly different ritual. Right. But ritually, yeah, ritually the same. Yeah. There's, this is the time for, for people to make something happen, and we cannot be foolish enough to think that you're the only person that had the idea to, at this very time, take advantage of the magical energy, energies and, and, and the thin veil between these realities. Mm -hmm. Others are doing that as well, and we've been warned about Vespin and what he's done. And we know that it has to do with the betrayers. I want to celebrate as, as much as the two of you, but I also don't want your moment to be spoiled because we have been unawares of interested parties coming in and mm. taking us out from underneath both of you. And they're coming. They tried to take you out. They're here. They're here. Okay. So uh, yes, I am. And we know that something is coming for us. And we know that other cities are creating weapons. And I congratulate you for yes. your beautiful achievement, and I share that ambition and that wonder about those planes and that exploration. But I'm put off by this so-called champion of the Matron of Ravens, who's come here to warn us and couldn't even utter the words of the betrayers, because he was scared. And that is precisely why I kneel to no god. Ooh. Because the second you kneel to one of them, you kneel to them all. Ooh. Something is here, it wants to threaten us, but we are the Ring of Brass. Oh. So gather your wits, gather your courage, gather your strength, and do the job that you know you need to do because this city needs us. Xerxes, can Woo, I? That was the best speech he's given so far. A guard outside of this room, and can I show the rest? Of the Ring of Brass, this room. And as you so say you that, Xerxes is continuing this like <laughs> monologue, and you can start to feel. <laughs> <laughs> you start to feel his blood boiling, and all of a sudden, each one of you starts to feel almost a simmering of your own blood, as if it starts to like, if 
passion and rage could be contagious, which I believe it absolutely is, you're starting to feel it invade you and start to simmer and make, make your blood boil. And then it expands out of you a little bit. And you see this like cosmic dust start to swirl around you mm. as you gain 19 temporary hit points. Oh. I'd like to use this as the inspiring leader. Look at you. Oh, oh, inspiring leader. Yeah. Yeah. 19, yeah. 19, that's a lot of damn. Nice. That is Crazy. almost, uh, that is uh, something upon us. 14 temp HP amongst wow. six people. And if it's coming, I say, <laughs> let it come. <laughs> you were saying so. Let it come. I would like. True first night. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to get your eyes on this room, the body. You have the knowledge of the arcane that I do not. And I would like to also go back to my offices at Cloudstone re-examine Vespin's room, his items, see if there was anything else that we missed, and maybe I can bring those items to you. not just the bow, but perhaps something we didn't pay close enough attention to. Okay. I'll help you however I can. Uh, can I lead them over to, yeah. the, to the room and ask you, for a you guard? You go to the room. Um, uh, you guys can absolutely just get a guard post at this room. Uh, you oh, yeah. know, Pesha has people that, that can be posted up. You guys enter into the room, See this dead body, see the cracked mirror. Um, I'm gonna let, you may roll arcana, you may roll history, you may roll perception, investigation, whatever you wanna roll. The best results will come from a religion check. Mm. Okay. Cool. A plus three? Is this all of us? <laughs> all of you, you're all in the room, you can all look. Also just saying, handled, handled that with a, you know, with just a melee weapon that didn't, didn't need any. <laughs> <laughs> I just a natural 20 for my religion check. Oh! 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 Yes. Do the rest of us need to roll anything? Yeah, I know. Can no. we just Early coast on that? Like, can, can we, we coast on that nat 20? Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. 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 Let's yeah. run yeah. that. Yeah. Um, uh, Save the room. Ooh, Ooh. Lighting, lighting change. Like, like, Ooh. Ah. Mm -hmm. Right across the net. Um, uh, a million percent. Um, mm. So. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. It's God fire. So, you all enter the room. Everyone starts looking. There's stuff to glean here. You can read some of this infernal. The mages of this place can find different stuff. Xerxes. Orange irises and bloodshot eyes. You look into the eyes of a dead man. Runes everywhere. You hear in your mind. It's not a comforting feeling. Nobody likes to feel like they're dreaming when they're wide awake. Oh, no. Is that. You see the infernal. That in word again. You see the exposed injury. You're a healer. You know. You know how you have lay on hands. You know what it. You're one, yes. You're one of the people that can cure disease. So you know that if this man was still alive, that his body would be riddled with tumorous growths all throughout. <sighs> and they're coming from the things that he has carved into his flesh. Infernal runes. Clerics have fallen out of vogue here in Avalir. What does it mean to draw power from a deity? It's complicated. What is the clerical version oh, of man. a wizard study? We all know that clerics draw their power from their gods, so but if the gods want power, why wouldn't they just grant their most powerful spells to any and all of their followers? Why are some clerics stronger than others? It's not arcana, it's not history, it's, it's their wisdom. 
Mm. As clerics grow in a deeper understanding of the facet of reality manifested by their deity, they become more aware and attuned to those forces within the world and can wield greater magics. Mm. There is a limit to what is safe to grant a follower. Wow. But now, what if you weren't worried about keeping your followers safe? You look into this man's eyes and a term floods into your mind. It's a term in infernal, it means puppet. It's a human so devoted to you that it's not even worth magically dominating them or charming them anymore. They just let you into their soul. Ooh. And Jeez. the word is knauf. 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 It's a word yeah, that right Why not? hasn't been spoken on Exandria since the foundations of this world. Knauf. The man you are looking at became a cleric of a betrayer. Ooh. And he became a cleric of a betrayer looking at the speed of these growths maybe a little over two weeks ago. Jeez. It's very soon. What would you do if you came back to the world after a long time away and nobody worshipped you, and you needed to make some moves real quick. Whoa! The, this is a mortal man that was forced to understand things that he was not ready for, because his master didn't need a servant, he just needed a puppet. Oh! 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 As 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 <laughs> Xerxes is processing all of this and and seeing the wasted person, wow, devoted to who he was following, and consumed by that devotion that was taken advantage of, he he just kneels and traces the wounds with his finger and just spends a moment on those tumors and takes a closer look. Is there anything about that? No, nothing is more familiar to me beyond what's been described. I've not seen this like this before. This is all unfamiliar. Hmm. I'm gonna point out the runes to those that are of an ar arcane understanding. I don't know if it's worth <laughs> copying them down or understanding them better, but this is, this is what I see has happened here, and I explained to them what I saw. I've already copied them down, and you see mm -hmm. kind of like thin, yes, <laughs> thin like wisps of light kind of pour out of the runes and into the orb that is constantly floating around Pesha. Cool. Very cool. Very Two weeks ago is when Vespin Cloris attempted his ritual, correct? Two weeks ago? Correct. He succeeded. We need to proceed as though he was successful. He was successful. But he yeah. succeeded with what? Bringing. To orb what? Not ascending. No. Bringing back. Some sort of betrayer god. Yes. Ever lost away. I don't even know. What the betrayer gods are? Do we do we have a, a running tally of, of these fellows? Yes. What are they for <laughs> us? Are they, they 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 are like they're betrayers. Yeah, they're just like a, a like they're not from, history. Yeah. Yeah. from history. Yeah, from well, history. Well, they've great. been sealed away. Okay, great. The, hmm. I mean, you live in an age where the prime deities walk Exandria openly, and their brethren. I mean, the schism is your 
creation. So I guess it just means but, like but the, those betrayer gods were kind of like in creation. Guantanamo Bay. You, you know that what happened was they were in pretty much like a maximum a, facility there place. Was a time in which completely locked away prime deities in a world of strife and chaos. Well, that's what I'm getting to give divine magic in my brain to their children, to mortals, and the primordials that had existed in the world, the elemental titans that had existed in the world prior to the arrival of the deities, who, before the schism, there was not a distinction between prime deity and betrayer. No betrayal had happened. There were just the gods and the primordials. The gods fractured when uh, divine magic was granted to mortals. The primordials rose up to correct that imbalance. Mm and the betrayers joined the primordials mm -hmm. against the cause of mortals. Okay. In an effort to rule out the hope that Which is Vespin what I learned in the, uh, the history manipulate access for that Matt Mercer. the betrayer god. Uh, do we know Describe. in history, are there any instances of one of these gods breaking through into this plane, even if for a short time before being pushed back? back? One, a single, an instance, an incursion. I'm going to improvise an important piece of canon right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. Or, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Or so much so that it's rare. The prime right. deities were so were so thorough in sealing the betrayer gods away that the betrayer gods were not able to grant spells. Hmm. The betrayer gods, Yo. the worship of them was completely fruitless. Wow. Nothing. You got nothing, even if you wanted to. Uh, wow. There's one okay. more thing I want to do with this body. Mm -hmm. I'm going to trace again with my finger the runes. Mm -hmm. And as I'm touching <laughs> it, <laughs> <laughs> touching the gross, yeah. Infuse I would, it with yeah. divine energy. I'm going to just that. spend a point of lay on hands on occasion, not to heal the body, yeah. but to connect. What are you worried about? You're not going to get um. <laughs> As I trace all of those runes. You connect. I don't know what it means for someone to become as lost as this man was to do what he did, oh. to seek for who he sought for. Mm. But you're a man with a lot of questions. And I think that you understand what it's like to feel lost. Wow. The eyes close, and this body, at least, knows more rest now than it did in life. Oof. Have a moment. Wow. Gross. I am of two minds. Uh, if we are amongst ourselves to admit that a Vespin Chloris succeeded in uh, interacting with a betrayer god. Um, it seems fitting that we either confirm uh, this possibility by revisiting your reconstructed site, or we seek out some greater understanding of Xerxes' dreams by finding a prophet or better understanding what is going on with the Hall of Prophecy. Yes, I agree. Um, okay. Uh, I uh, admit I am not wholly ready to give myself over to this idea um, and would like to better understand what is uh, what exactly we are potentially dealing with before we start making decisions from a place of truth. Well, just one, I, you know, I don't have opinions, I just report, um, but, but, <laughs> Uh, just a, the a theory to toss out as, as you were talking and, and you were talking. I, it's just a wild theory. It could be possibly totally wrong. But I, the betrayer gods can't come through. They're locked out. Mm -hmm. can't, can't, they can't get in here. They're stuck out, mm -hmm. right? So, uh, and, and we know that uh, this lady became the matron of ravens. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so, and Vespin did the same thing. So. The, the, this betrayer god that Vespin has awoken, or whatever, 
wouldn't have to make the journey from uh, lands beyond to get here because Vespin would be the betrayer god. He, he would be here already. Doesn't have to go through any gate or anything because he's gone through this ritual that makes him a god. It's possible. We would know. We would know if he had ascended, though. We knew hmm. when the Matron of Ravens. How did we know? Thought we had a feeling. We were like, in, in, the, <laughs> in, the, in, the, in the blink of an eye, anyone who was standing in a temple to the previous god of death watched all of the names of that god be erased from the stone in front of them at the moment of her ascension. But there Ooh. is no knowing of the betrayer god, so there would be no one who knew if they changed. Yeah. Except Ooh. here we have evidence of someone who was drawing upon their power and was receiving it, so the line of that is established here. Loquacious. You're the one extra planar person here. Give me an insight check. Oh. On myself? I'm self-insighting? No, I think you're I think you're inciting the world. Ooh. I fucking love inciting the world. <laughs> uh, 22, but if I fail, I can add a d4. <laughs> I love the offer every time. Every time. Yeah, go. If I fail. Roll roll a d you won't fail because you're on you're on a gradient. So roll the d4 for me. Get that. Okay. 24. 24. Um, <laughs> you're sitting here, you're talking about like, did this ritual work or not, right? Um, yeah. All of your friends, you have, you have powerful friends here in this room who um, have very specific functions within the city. Um, right now, you're, for being not human, you were thinking about human nature. You were thinking about the nature of all beings. The gods are impossible to fathom, sure, but if they have wars, if they squabble and bicker with each other, how inhuman can they be? Mm. If there is a puppet here, it's indicative of a conspiracy, and a conspiracy exists to accomplish something that has not happened yet. So I think that when you're saying like, the ritual, something happened. I think on that insight, that powerful insight check, you, you're pulling on the right thread. Something happened, perhaps something terrible, but the apocalypse, if the apocalypse happened, you'd notice it. Something is at work, True. but not finished. That is what your opinion is, as you nice. try to put the pieces together. Sarah is right. A, an infernal cultist came to the palace of the Keeper of somewhat, Scrolls in Avalir. Which is more terrifying. But that cultist came to do something, which means that something needed to happen. Wow. As the buildup is more is terrifying than the actual that, apocalypse. Charmingly. Charmingly. A lot mm -hmm. snaps into place for Pesha as well. How the fuck did this motherfucker get in? <laughs> yeah. Is there like something I can do to like check? How did he, br I'm assuming that I would have so many things set up in terms of like, you warning know, signs. warning signs, warning, yeah. breach points, zones of truth, you name it. You have divining stones. Divining you, stones. You, go, you go back through, through a divining stone effortlessly uh, and look through. Um, uh, looking at my smart home. Looking at your smart home. I'm looking at all the, the ring cams. <laughs> uh, n ah, system update. Ah. A Hadmadad walked down this hallway that was not in the livery of the Golden Scythe. Mm -hmm. It walked down, it walked down this hallway and never came back out. Hmm. It never came back for the whole party up to this current moment as you're recording. You do a quick scan of the hallway, there's no Hadmadad anywhere, but you see just the corner from where one of your divine students can catch it, the Hadmadad opening the door to this room. Right. And that Hadmadad had come as a porter carrying a gift of Dean Lycretia Hollow. Wait, 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 Hello. wait. <laughs> the walk sign is on. <laughs> carrying a gift of DNA, wait. Uh, just, so okay. when Lycretia Hollow showed up, she had a Hadmadad with her carrying yeah. a gift. 
that Hadmadad put the gift down, and being a Hadmadad that no one would care to follow or look at that much, wandered, <laughs> wandered off, walked into this room, and that's the last you see of it, and you're in this room, and it's not in here. But there wow. was an invisible cultist in here. And that was the one, because I caught out of the corner of my eye when I was doing my, um, like, detect thoughts, and wow. it would... No, different one. That different one's, one. That one's still disanimated. That one's disanimated. If invisibility is a second-level spell, and disguise self is a first-level spell. Woo! That cultist was disguised as a Hadmadad and walked in here, and then when he got into the room, cast invisibility on himself and was waiting for the right moment. But the right moment never came because he got his throat slit. Yeah. By the senior sight warden. <sighs> we got got by cantrips, baby. He <laughs> got got. Fundamentals, you guys. Fundamentals. <laughs> <laughs> they have all the Just think about all the shit you've gotten Dean away Hall. with as third level characters. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, Dean Hollow. List. Where is Dean Hollow? Where is. So I'm going to go over. The necromancy, Art Mage, or the Ring of Silver. Yes. I'm going to go. Nice. She was the one who brought in. Um, um, she came with. Um, Pervon. 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 Yeah. Um, or she had invited Pervon yes. and then openly mocked him in the, in sort of like in the. <sighs> oh oh my gosh. This is pretty dope. Okay. Pretty dope. Some solid dunks. All right. All right. <laughs> I, okay. I'm, over, um, I'm imagining this room, I'm adding shit to canon as we go, has like one of those like big panorama windows um, like CEOs have and they're like upstairs offices Ooh, looking over their warehouse, looking at their like, you know, worker minions. Um, uh, <laughs> I, have, I imagine I have that in um, that the house and I'm, I'm looking over down into the foyer area. Can I see, can I clock Dean? You see, um, uh, there was a woman, Madara Glyph, was talking with her all night, but you don't see Lycrisha Hollow anywhere here. Mm. Well, we can go talk to who was talking to her and ask where she went. How does our telepathic link work? Any of us can jump in and send a message, or just you can hit any of us? Uh, yeah, I'll bring that shit back up. Rary's telepathic mm. bond. Cool. Mm. Everyone can talk to everyone, and you can, like, for how you silent distance. Distance. Or or I'm just over any distance. Yeah. Any She's the source of that. Okay. It's a really good one? spell. It's a cool it's spell. Hour, yeah. More than that. It's an hour, but I can ritually cast it again and again and again. So, okay. Let's That's maybe awesome. keep that up. So wait, okay. And <laughs> this is above the table, Marisha talking <laughs> to DM. The one that I saw, the Hamadad, that went boof. That, that just that was one of shot. that was a different one. That was yeah. one of Nidus's. Um, uh, so basically, uh, what happened is. That one disanimated for reasons you still don't understand, but you heard that one saying Gordranus over and over again. Okay. Um, this was right. an, a private one of Lycretia's, and that's putting that together in your head. You're like, now you don't know if Lycretia knew or not, but it's looking pretty. A Hadmadad in her employ yeah. walked in with a gift, put the gift on the table walked down a hallway without being ordered to, opened a door, let itself in a room. Where's the gifts? Yeah. What gifts? Mm. What did she bring? Mm. Room. Yeah, where's the, is there a big table with gifts? Is there a registry? <laughs> like a wedding? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I brought you a curate. Well, we need to go <laughs> see if there's an actual <laughs> gift or if it's something that's gonna go boom. I made a donation on your behalf. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't done it yet, but I'm going to. <laughs> I also don't think it's important, but I, I point out to Nidus the, the core of the Hamada that just has the, the glyph that looks um, like it's missing. You don't put your proprietary technology, you have a technology that ha keeps their engines in there. We keep the engines, uh, the energy is stored at the scythe and fed out. I learn more every day. <laughs> How um, difficult is it, oh, Nidus, to tamper with one of your Hamadats? Mm. Someone would have to be in the guild hall. Someone would have to be in the guild hall. <laughs> He's good. He's good. But uh, I mean, once again, just the coincidences, which <laughs> I hate them. Yeah. <laughs> 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 we had this um, little infiltrator. Yes, we well, have the Sphinx. The guild hall is <gasps> relatively empty. It, it was not the Sphinx who did majestically during the parade of beasts. Um, the guild hall is relatively empty at this current time, but I was just there uh, before uh, meeting up with Laren, and uh, my man, Alessander, is there um, and had did not mention any sort of tampering or the like. 
Let's go find this gift. Yes. Let's go find this hollow. Agree. And see what we can and see. Go from there. Yeah, I want to see what this gift is. Uh, incredible. Um, there is much that you have all discussed doing. Finding hollow, finding the gift. Yes. You have mentioned the Hall of Prophecy is yes. returning to Cloudstone. There is mm -hmm. much to do in precious little time. That's right. As all of you stand from your seats at the ivy table, stand outside, you hear. Oh, oh my god! No. The fireworks extravaganza. Oh, okay. That killed me. This mini is too stressful. I'm canceling it. <laughs> what about our museum? Oh my charter? gosh, I dude. Yeah. His would be like. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, he got us. He got me there. He got me. That was good. <laughs> that was really good. <laughs> Guys, I hope you enjoyed this part two of episode two of A Calamity. And if you like this, please hit that like button down below. And if you're new, hit that subscribe button. We're going to do much more. We're going to finish out Calamity. We got a lot more content going on. We have Dragon Age coming this Friday. We have Vox Machina season two. We have The Last of Us. We've got so much going on. It's going to be crazy. Don't forget to check out moviepalette.com. MW Geeks 15, 15% off your purchase on top of the sale that's going on for Christmas. It's a perfect gift for anybody that is a movie TV show lover and they need something for their wall or their office, living room, whatever. Be sure and check them out, moviepalette.com. You will not be disappointed, I promise you. Guys, be sure and come back for part three of A Calamity. We have a fireworks extravaganza, apparently. We're gonna find a gift and man, we're gonna enjoy this time together on this watch along as you guys guide me through this beautiful story that's being told. Guys, I love you. I will see you on the next one very, very soon. And I see you for Dragon Age on Netflix. Absolution, episode one. It's gonna be such a good time. Matt Mercer, voice acting. It's gonna be an awesome show. I got a feeling. All right. I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.